What's up everyone, Danny here with another video, but this time a substance painter video. The next few videos are gonna be substance painter. And and I'll explain more and more as we work through them, kind of why or what I'm what I'm trying to do. But um, yeah, doing a little bit of a detour away from Blender for a second into Substance Painter and gonna talk about some stuff here. Now, some of you who follow on Facebook or Discord may have seen this image here. This image started as a texturing journey, a, a journey of exploration, if you will. I was trying to um, see if I could texture assets the way I wanted to texture assets entirely in Blender. And I used this older model I have and I tried it out and I failed. It just didn't work. I then tried it using an add-on called Mask Tools and I liked it. I got fairly far in the process, but then the UI became so bogged down, so laggy that I just couldn't work anymore. And I wasn't able to finish uh, the model um, the way I wanted it. So I fell back into Substance Painter and did all the texturing in Substance Painter. And it took me less than half of the time to do it in Substance Painter than it did to do it in Blender. Um, and part of that is because I'm just comfortable in Substance Painter. It's like Photoshop on 3D assets. It's really, really easy for me and I just enjoy the process. And I do a lot of hand painted textures. So it's just, it's very natural for me. So I made this scene and people started asking me about my workflow and how I do things, et cetera, et cetera. So I figured I'd make a few videos, kind of talk about some key points. And so that's where we're gonna start here. Before I jump into that though, just a bit of business, I went ahead and did it. I did what everyone does. I made a Patreon. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, if you feel like supporting me on Patreon, then that'd be kick-ass. I've got some tiers set up. I got um, some thank yous and rewards at various tiers, including things like asset packs, model assets, custom videos, behind the scenes videos, all this stuff that um, is either paid assets like on Gumroad will be free to patrons, uh, videos made specifically for patrons that it won't be made pu uh, public, um, you know, behind the scenes videos, uh, specific tutorials that will never see the public. They're going to be specifically for patrons, all that kind of stuff, all the usual stuff, you know? So if you feel like supporting me on there, that'd be super amazing. If not, no worries. I'm still going to make this stuff. Um, if you feel like supporting me on here and you want to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, that'd be also kick-ass. I do appreciate that. And I appreciate all the support I've gotten thus far. And I, I just, I, it's really humbling. I really do thank everyone for their support. So that out of the way, links will be in the descriptions if you're interested. Let's talk about Substance Painter and some key points here. So the first thing I wanted to comment on is I skipped all of the importing and baking of my texture sets. And the reason for that is there's a lot of videos on that stuff on YouTube already. If you wanna see how I do it, I'll make a video on it, but there's so much out there on that exact process. Um, I didn't feel it was, it was really necessary for this video. Just know that I start all my textures at 2K. I will work at 2K and rarely will I upscale to 4K on the way out. Usually I keep things at 2K unless there's a specific need. Um, but I find for what I'm doing and, you know, um, I know, for instance, I know how far this house is from my camera in my scene. I know what textures I can get away with. And so most of the time I'm working with 2K. That aside, all of my textures that I used in the Blender um, version of this model, which some of you might may have seen on Facebook, um, were the same textures I used in this Substance Painter version of it. I wanted to keep everything true, right? I didn't want to use different textures for different um, for different approaches. I used the exact same PBR textures on both the Blender and Substance Painter um, uh, versions of this. So that being said, you know, you can use the exact same textures on this asset if you acquired this asset and you could do it entirely in Blender and knock yourself out, have fun. Uh, everything I use is free. I either get my textures from ccotextures.com or polyhaven.com. And there's a reason I do this. I'll talk about it in a second. But um, those are free textures. Feel free to grab them. Um, I could put links in the description of the videos so you can just go grab them and you can follow along if you want. I find that for increased realism, using really high-end PBR textures um, 
improves the output, right? So high quality in, high quality out is kind of how I look at it. And um, everything that I'm going to show you right here applies to any PBR texture set, right? It's nothing. It doesn't have to be Polyhaven or CCO textures. If you subscribe to Andrew Price's Polygon.com, um, those texture assets can be imported in Substance Painter. If you subscribe to Quixel, uh, Quixel textures can be imported into Substance Painter and you'll have this great high quality output from both those sources. Polygon and Quixel, very high quality textures, very, very, very good stuff. Um, CCO textures, pretty good. I like most of them. Polyhaven, really good. Um, but in all fairness, the textures you're going to get from Polygon and or Quixel are going to be, they're, I mean, they're usually scans. They're going to be much higher quality. You're going to get a much better uh, realistic output from those. That being said, I wanted to use all free textures. Here we go. Here's the first thing. And the first thing I want to talk about is importing a set of PBR materials into Substance Painter. And it's really quite simple. So if I go into my folder where my texture is, in this case, I've got it pulled up right here. And this is straight downloaded from CCO. And I can see I've got an ambient occlusion, my color, displacement. I've got a couple of normal options. Um, and then I've got my roughness. All I want here is my roughness. I'm using my OpenGL normal, my displacement, my color, and my ambient occlusion. And you don't even really need the ambient occlusion. 95% um, of the time, I don't even use it. But I import it if I have it, just in case I change my mind. So I'm gonna drag these into my material um, library in Substance Painter, and then I'm presented with um, this screen here. And what this is basically asking me is, how do I define these textures? And if I click on one of these undefined buttons here, you'll see I've got some options, alpha, color, LUT, environment, texture. I'll go over these other options later, but for now, these are just gonna be textures. So I'm gonna turn each one of these into a texture, like so. And then my second option here is to decide where I want these assets stored. If I choose current session, that'll be here just until I quit Substance Painter, then it's gone, I have to reconnect them later. If I bring it in to the project, in this case, my project is called importing. If I bring it into importing, it'll be here for the life of this project. No matter if I quit Substance Painter, restart my computer, move, doesn't matter, these assets will be here. Or I can import it into my library, in which case it'll be available to me in anything I do in Substance Painter. So regardless of the asset. Now this is good if you know you're going to use this particular material a lot. And in most cases, I don't know if I'm gonna use that material again. I might find a better one that I like, you know, a week later. So um, for now, I'm just gonna import into the project. Click import, okay? And then here they are. Now, when I'm working in Substance Painter, uh, and again, I could talk about this in detail in another video, but um, typically I'll bring a model in and I'll, I'll bring it in one of three ways. It's either gonna be one texture set for the entire mesh, and I'll use masks and substance painter to, you know, to separate out textures. Or I'll bring in a model with multiple texture sets, which is what I did here. So like, for example, the roof is its own texture set, these planks are their own texture set, the chimney is its own texture set, et cetera, et cetera. Each texture set has its own UV tile, its own resolution, um, and it just allows me to separate things and keep resolution high. Or the third way I sometimes do this is with UDIMs, which is a whole different workflow altogether, um, which I can talk about in another video. In this case, like I said, texture sets is what I used. And again, I've already imported and baked all these because you know there's tons of videos on that. So if I showed you here in my texture set list, you can see all my texture sets here, right? Roof, the roof tiles, under the roof, the window glass, it's all here, right? Okay, so that out of the way, I wanna start applying my imported texture set to my house, all right? And, to, and this particular texture was for the planks. Now, I could do this a couple of different ways. I, I hit Alt, Control, and then I think it's a right click. I'm using a, ta I'm using a pen, so it's confusing sometimes, but, and you click on the, on the part of the model you want textured, it'll select that texture set. So there it is, main house planks. Or I could just open up this texture set list and I can choose a different part of the model, right? There's two ways. It's quicker just to go Control, Alt, right click, and then it's there. Now, what did that do? Let me show you. So by default, Substance Painter gives you a paint layer. Now, I don't want this paint layer, so I'm gonna remove it, okay? Instead, I'm gonna drop in a fill layer, and I'm gonna call this fill layer 
base. Now, in this panel here, you've got options. UV projection, you can go all kinds of things. Triplanar and triplanar, the equivalent of that in Blender is like, um, I think they call it like box or something like that, where it, it basically wraps around the object. It doesn't use, doesn't use your UV. In this case, I need it to use my UV because I need the wood grain to follow the direction of the planks, right? And my UVs are solid, right? I took the time, I made sure that I did a proper UV unwrap of the model. So my UVs are solid, I'm keeping it on UV. The scale we're gonna come back to in a second. We're not gonna need rotation here, but down here under material, you can see I've got some options. Now I know that I don't need an opacity channel here. I don't need an emission panel here. I don't need a metal channel here, and I'm not going to use a height channel, and I'll explain why, but for now I'm gonna leave it there. Now all I have to do now is take my imported texture and just plug them in. So I'm gonna take the color, drag it into the color, and there it is. And you can see the same thing would happen in Blender. The texture is huge compared to the resolution on the model, right? That's why it looks like this, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab the normal, bring the normal in, the roughness, bring the roughness in. Okay, now, just like in Blender, in Blender what you would do is you'd apply a mapping node um, and you would scale the texture. Essentially, you would tile it, right? You'd scale it to where it tiled. Same thing here. I'm gonna go to my scale and I'm just gonna try something like eight. And um, I, I think I like that. That looks pretty good, all right? If I, remember, I'm in 2K, so if I zoom in like this close, I know it's gonna look shitty, all right? But that's okay. Um, because I'm not gonna see my model that close. In my scene, it's gonna be about, or somewhere around there, right? So even if I did a quick render here, um, I'm just gonna just for, um, for the sake of uh, cleanliness, where am I? Nope. I'm gonna turn some things off here. Let's do this. Let's keep the ground, but let's put the ground out there. It's tough when you're using a pen tablet to try to get this right where you want it. Okay, let's just say it's something like that. All right, so that's about the distance that my house is going to be um, from the camera. And then I'm not really gonna go into um, a, you know changing the HDRI and doing all that. That's for another video. This is just importing the textures. But um, typically I would do this just to kind of test how the texture looks, you know, its scale and everything. In my on my particular asset. Okay, so now this is why I don't use the height channel, right? If I take my displacement and I drag my displacement into the height, I don't know if you can see it in the YouTube video with compression, but if you can, you should see that it's really ugly. It's horrible looking. It's, it's applied this height to the wood and I have no control over this, right? I can't control this. Um, so, what I do is I make a separate height channel. So I'm gonna make another fill layer and I'm gonna call this base height. And I'm only gonna activate the height channel. In fact, I'll go back into the original base. I'm gonna turn off the height. So all I have is color, roughness, normal. Go into my second layer and only have the height. Then I'm not just gonna drag that in there because if you drag that in there, you get the exact same problem, right? It's the exact same problem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a black mask to that layer, select the mask, click on your little magic wand, and add a fill layer, okay? Now in the fill layer, we're gonna drag our displacement in. It's expecting a grayscale image. Now it doesn't look like anything, right? Of course. If we go back into our, um, into our uh, settings here, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure the scale is the same. Now I know that in my base here I used eight, for my, in fact, let's just make it 10, I think. Yeah, I like 10 better. Okay, so we use 10. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make this also 10. So they're matched, okay? Now, here's where the magic happens. Now, back in the, you know, the, the, the base height layer, I can adjust the height now to whatever I want it to be. So I could be as subtle or as aggressive as I want, but I have the control over this now. Right. And I can see this just a little bit. I don't think the height in here makes a difference. Let me just double check. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, so then there we go. So now I've got my base color roughness normal, and then my height as a separate layer that is completely independent. 
and I can control it as much as I want, right? Then I can just go back in here, select these two, group them, and just call this base wood. And then there we go, right? There is the, there's the basis for my entire house. Um, and then I typically won't um, copy this over until I get the whole thing done, like with all the painting. But let's just say you were done. Let's just say, okay, cool, I'm done. Here's my texture. I'm happy with it. Let's apply it. So if I go into my layer and I control C that, remember control alt right click. It, you can't see it, but I'm now selected onto the back house planks. I can just control V and then there it is. All right. So you can see how fast this is. I can do the same thing with the side panels here. Just get rid of that. Done. All right. And I might have to go through here and make some changes. Like for example, um, the textures, you know, the resolution is different on the side panel. So if I go into the side panel and I can see here, like, okay, this is, this is probably a little too much. So then I can just dial this back, say something like five, do the same thing with the height because they have to match, right? Take this back to five, right? And adjust as necessary, but there it is. Do the same thing, like I said, with my side planks, you know, my windows here. Right? And you can quickly see how fast this becomes, right? Um, like, like the floor in here, same thing, oops. Right, you can very quickly see how it becomes insanely fast, you know, to be able to texture your models like this. Um, and of course this applies to everything, right? Like in my scene that I made, that I posted in the beginning of this video, um, I think I used like four or five different PBR sets um, it all imported the same way. I used the wood, I used the dirt, I used, in one of the versions, I used a moss, I used, um, you know, paint things, I, I graffiti, which, you know, which I'll, I'll talk about in a later video, um, different wood for the planks, and, and all that I'll go over, but that's pretty much it for now. I mean, that's as simple as that is. Import your PBR texture, um, right into Substance Painter, drop it in where you need it to go, and then continue working. Add layers, um, you know, work it up, you know, the way you normally would. And again, high quality input equals high quality output. So get the best textures you can get. And um, yeah, happy painting. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Again, I hope you found this useful. Check in for future ones. We're going to be on a substance painter ride for a little while. So if you like it, stay tuned. Hit the bell icon. Be notified when I put out new ones. Subscribe if you're not already. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.